Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome, welcome guys. Uh, let's get into the word. I want to bring to you guys, paint a picture, talk about the crucifixion of Christ. I know you guys know that story. That's an old story. We all heard it. But I think that to me, uh, what I'm going to try to bring across today is how um, the crucifixion before Jesus got captured, what happened before he got in front of Pilate and how I can relate, and I know that you guys can relate, that we've all taken part in the roles that are being played during this situation. Um, so I was watching The Passion of the Christ, uh, Chris, um, not on Christmas, on New Year's Eve, and the scene where he is standing before the crowd, Jesus is standing before the crowd, Pilate is standing beside him, and Pilate is asking the crowd, what should I do? Right? And, and Pilate has a responsibility. He has to make a decision. That's why the um, high priest and the, the, um, the, the teachers, yeah, the teachers of the law were wanting to, for Pilate to crucify Jesus. But Pilate knew that this was all a sham, that, that this whole situation, this whole spectacle that they brought in front of him was due to the fact, not that Jesus did anything wrong, because they knew that what he was being accused of was not true. And the things that he was claiming that he was, you know, it wasn't wrong of him saying it, but they wanted to make it bigger than what it should be only so that they can be satisfied and they just felt threatened and that's why they were doing what they were doing. So, Pilate is standing before the crowd and let me read you the verse. And here we are in Mark 15, verse 15, chapter, actually chapter 15, verse 12. And it says, What should I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them, Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crimes has he committed? Asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder. Crucify him. Now, it also says on verse 15, Wanting to satisfy the crowd. How many times have you wanted to satisfy someone else in what they're talking about or what they're saying or even when they're accusing someone or even if they're voicing their opinion just because you wanted to satisfy them you agreed with them not knowing rea you really didn't even know what they're talking about who the person is you don't even know them or not or anything for that matter but because you wanted to be a part of what was going on and you wanted to satisfy the crowd or satisfy that individual you agreed with them. That's exactly what was happening in the crowd. Most of those people that were shouting were doing that because the high priests and the teachers of the law were egging them on. And because they just wanted to be a part of what was going on, they agreed with them, not knowing. Now, Jesus is standing before them, being accused of things that are untrue, doesn't say anything. Pilate is right there next to him, not wanting to crucify Jesus because he knows that this is not true. So Pilate decides to bring a man who's been in jail for quite some time beside Jesus. And he says to the crowd, who would you rather me to release? Jesus, who really has not done anything, or Barabbas, who's killed people, who's lied, who's cheated, who's robbed, who's done all kinds of things. Who would you want me to release? And he did this because he basically wanted to wash his hands from the responsibility that he had of making a choice that he knew was the right choice. But because he wanted to please the crowd, he knew 
that the obvious choice was basically just to say, no, we're not going to do this. But he wanted to give them a choice where he can fall back and say, well, uh, you guys have a choice here. So you should make this choice is the obvious choice. So he brought a guy who's a murderer, who's a murderer, a thief, and asked, which one should we release? To his amazement, <laughs> to his amazement, the crowd chose Barraba to be released instead of Jesus. Now, mind you, Jesus knew that this was going to happen before it happened. Because if you read the text back, if you read a couple chapters back before this happened, Jesus has dinner with the 12 disciples. And he says that there's a couple things that's going to happen in the next couple of hours, in the next days. The Son of Man is going to be crucified. And one of you guys is going to basically give me up. One of you guys is going to uh, betray me, he says. And they all looked at each other. And they all said, no, who? And he said, one of you guys did dip your bread on, in my plate. And God already knew, Jesus knew what was going to happen within the next couple of hours and who was going to do what and what was the role that was going to be played by each and every one of them. And they all claimed that they were going to die with him, especially Peter. Peter said, there's no way. I would never betray you. I would never do anything to hurt you. I would be there with you even through death. And Jesus looked at him and said, you are going to deny me. Not once, not twice, but three times. And he still said, no, he would not. How many times have you said that you wouldn't do certain things, that you will not do this and that you would not do that? Sometimes we say these things not knowing that we would act different when we are in the situation. And that's what happened to Peter. But God knew what was going to happen. And that's what he said. Then Jesus said, Hey, we need to go. I want to go pray to my father. And he took three of the disciples with him. And when he went up to the mountain, he was heavy hearted, it says in the, in the text. And you can see it in the, in the, in the movie too. He prayed to, to God. He asked him, you can take this away. This doesn't have to happen. But he realized that this is what his father wanted, so he had to do it. And it's not that God wasn't willing to die, that he wasn't willing to sacrifice himself. It was that he knew that the 12 disciples were not going to be able to live with themselves with the things that they were going to do during the time that this was going to happen. That was his biggest pain from what I see, not only in the video, but also from what I read. God knows the things that you're going to do before you do it. But he is still there ready and willing and waiting. After you make the decision, after you make the mistake to come to him. He knows. He already knows this. He told Peter. He told uh, Judas. When they came to get him. And they, and, and they grabbed him and Judas came up to him and gave him a kiss. He called him. He knew it. Judas felt, felt, you can see it in the video, he felt so wrong. And exactly what I seen in the video and what I read in the text was exactly what I was seeing being played in the video. Judas couldn't stand the fact that he made the decision that he made. Peter couldn't stand that he it did exactly what God told him he would do. And the guilt in them was so strong that they could not get up from that situation. That was what was happening to me in the last couple of days. The reason why, the last couple of days, the last couple of weeks, months, and that's the reason why I kind of fell off track. I think that we all have played a role at one point or another where we've either been a Judas where we either been a Peter, where we've been like the 12 disciples that when God was being 
captured, they all ran away. They didn't stay. They didn't stay there. Like they said they would. I know I have turned my back on God numerous of times. I know to a certain extent I must have betrayed him too. I'm not going to lie by the things that I said. I'm pretty sure I denied him too. See, I'm no better than any one of you guys. I make mistakes. And I still keep making mistakes. But I am trying to live a righteous life. If what I've said today, for whatever reason, you can relate and you feel that you want to make a change in your life, it's really simple, guys. Bow your head. Repeat after me. Father God, I come before you asking for forgiveness. Wanting to make a change in my life, but no, I know, I know that I can't do it on my own. I ask of you not only to forgive me, but to please show me what I should do to make better decisions in my life. And how I should go about serving you and only you. I stand before you asking for forgiveness, realizing that I'm unworthy, wanting to better my situation, but knowing that without you, I can't do it. Please, please God, write my name in the book of life. Help me become a better servant. Help me become the light in darkness. In your name, I pray. If you prayed that prayer, guys, welcome. Because God has forgiven you. And anything that you've done in the past stays exactly in the past. God would never bring it to the light. And you should not feel guilty. And if from day to day on you make a mistake, the greatest thing that God has made is another day. You can start all over. If you're able to wake up in the morning, Thank God. I, God, thank you for another day. On this day, I hope that I can do better than yesterday. And go from there, guys. Try to live a righteous life. Try to help your neighbor. Try to be a blessing to someone else other than yourself. So, that's the word that I have for you guys today. I hope that you guys have a blessed day. Those of you that keep following me, thank you so much. Those of you that keep leaving me messages, thank you so much. Please, by the way, if you prayed this prayer with me, can you please leave in the description down below that you have accepted God. I just want to keep you guys in, in my prayers. Uh, and I would love to hear your story. Um... To my nephew Marcus who gets on here all the time and leaves me a message. Thank you so much for supporting me. If you decide you want to watch The Passion of the Christ, talk to your mom. Because it is kind of a uh, graphic movie. Um, before you decide to sit down and watch it. Um, if you have not, like Marcus, seen that movie, watch the movie guys. It's a great movie. Sit down and read the text. I will be leaving in the description down below the text I just read so that you can actually find it for yourself. And I'll leave the previews of The Passion of the Christ if you never even heard of it. Also, I'll leave it in the link down below so that you can check it out. I'll see you guys in the next one. I hope you guys have a blessed day. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, thank you so much. I can't say that enough, guys.